The Barzan sisters lay dying, their ravaged bodies covered in oozing sores, as Keller made her decision. Decades after the brutal war with Earth left their homeworld in ruins, a mysterious disease now threatened to exterminate the last of her kind. Huddled in a crumbling shelter with the few remaining survivors, all of them growing weaker by the hour, Kalar realized they had only one desperate hope, begging their sworn enemies, the humans, for aid. We can't trust them, one of the other survivors protested. You know what they did to us in the war. They'll let us rot. Kalar swallowed hard, her voice hoarse. Without their help, we go extinct. We have no choice. As the debate raged, the stench of sickness and despair hung heavy in the air. Finally, with great reluctance, the Barzan survivors agreed to send a distress signal to the nearest human outpost. On the bridge of the warship Valiant, Captain Lawrence Collins stared at the viewscreen, his jaw clenched as he read the desperate message from the dying Barzans. Around him, his crew muttered angrily, their old wounds from the war still raw. Ignore them, sir, his first officer said. After everything they did to us, they don't deserve our help. Collins hesitated, haunted by memories of the conflict's horrific toll on both sides. Maybe, just maybe, saving these Barzans could be the first step on the long road to peace. He made his decision. Set course for the Barzan homeworld, he ordered. Maximum speed. As the Valiant knifed through space towards the devastated planet, Collins wondered if his choice would herald a new era between their peoples, or if the decades of hatred ran too deep. With the future of two races hanging in the balance, he could only pray that the mysterious alien girl who sent the fateful plea held the key to their survival and their redemption. The Valiant glided into position alongside the battered Barzan ship, its sleek hull dwarfing the alien craft. With a metallic clang, the docking clamps engaged, forming an airlock between the two vessels. Captain Collins checked the seals on his environment suit the biofilter hissing as it scrubbed the air. Behind him, Lieutenant Novak and four armed security officers stood ready, faces grim behind their polarized visors. The airlock hissed open. Collins stepped into the dimly lit corridor of the Barzan ship, his boots ringing on the metal deck. The air was thick with the stench of sickness and despair. Shadows stirred in the gloom ahead. Kalar emerged from the darkness, flanked by a dozen haggard Barzan survivors. Her eyes met Collins, a mixture of desperate hope and wary suspicion. The Barzans raised their weapons, aiming at the humans with shaking hands. Collins held up a gloved hand. We're here to help, he said, his voice muffled by his helmet. We have medicine, food, supplies. Let us treat your sick. Raxar, a burly Barzan with a plasma rifle, stepped forward, teeth bared. Why should we trust you, human, after all the death you unleashed on us? Collins met his glare steadily. The war is over. We're here to save lives, not take them. As if on cue, Novak came forward, med scanner in hand. She began examining the nearest Barzan, her movements slow and deliberate. The alien tensed but did not resist. Novak ran the scanner over a weeping sore on the Barzan's chest. She froze, staring at the readout in growing horror. Captain, her voice was barely audible. This is, this is Chimera. Collins's blood ran cold. Chimera, the bioweapon Earth had unleashed in the war's desperate final days, a mutagenic plague designed to ravage Barzan physiology, the ultimate abomination, now their greatest shame. He found Kellar watching him, her eyes hard. Yes, she said softly, your weapon, your sin, and now perhaps our deliverance. Collins swallowed bile. We'll make this right, he vowed. Whatever it takes, you have my word. As the humans began unloading medical equipment, a glimmer of hope kindled in Kalar's eyes. But Raxar turned away, hand clenched on his rifle, a shadow falling across his face. On the Valiant's bridge, Commander Janus paced like a caged animal. This is a mistake, he growled. We should quarantine them, not coddle them. They'd have left us to rot if the roles were reversed. That's what sets us apart, Collins replied. We're better than what we did. Novak nodded, standing firm at her captain's side. But even as they argued, 
the seeds of ruin were being sown. In a darkened corner of the Barzan ship, Raxar met with his cohorts, their faces twisted with bitterness and hate. The humans destroyed us, he snarled, stole our future. Now they think they can buy back their souls with trinkets and honeyed words? He hefted his rifle. When the time is right, we will seize their ship, their weapons, and we will forge a new Barzan empire from the ashes of the old. As he spoke, a slow smile spread across his followers' faces. They had been broken, but not forever. They would rise again, stronger than before. And when they did, the humans would pay for their sins in blood. Lieutenant Novak's hands trembled as she administered another dose of antiviral medication to a writhing Barzan patient. Sweat beaded on her brow beneath the sealed environment suit. The makeshift medical bay, once a cargo hold on the alien vessel, buzzed with activity as human medics worked alongside their Barzan counterparts. How's it looking? Captain Collins asked, his voice tight with concern. Novak shook her head. We're slowing the progression, but we need more time. The Chimera virus is... evolving. Collins nodded grimly. Keep at it. I've got our engineers analyzing samples. We'll find a way to beat this thing. As he turned to leave, Kalar approached. The Barzan leader's eyes were sunken with exhaustion, but a flicker of hope remained. Captain, thank you for all you're doing. I never thought I'd say this, but your people have shown true compassion. Collins managed a wan smile. We have a lot to atone for, Kalar. This is just the start. A sudden tremor shook the ship sending medical equipment clattering to the floor. Alarms blared. Collins tapped his comm badge. Bridge, report! Static crackled, then his first officer's voice came through. Sir, we've lost power to decks four through seven. Engineering reports multiple system failures. It's like the ship is fighting against itself. Collins frowned. This was no coincidence. He caught Kalar's worried gaze. I need to check on my crew. Will you? A deafening explosion rocked the vessel, throwing them both to the ground. Emergency lights flickered on, bathing the medical bay in an eerie red glow. Screams and shouts echoed through the corridors. The Valiant! Colin scrambled to his feet, helping Kellar up. We've been hit! He raced toward the airlock, connecting the two ships, Kellar close behind. The scene that greeted them was chaos. Smoke billowed from ruptured conduits, and sparks rained down from exposed wiring. Collins's crew worked frantically to contain the damage. Report, he barked. Commander Janus appeared, his face smeared with soot. Main power core is critically damaged, sir. We're running on auxiliaries, but life support and propulsion are failing. Collins' mind raced. This was sabotage, plain and simple, and he had a good idea who was behind it. Where's Raxar? he demanded, turning to Kellar. Her eyes widened in realization. No, he wouldn't. But even as she spoke, the thunder of weapons fire erupted from the far end of the corridor. Collins saw a group of armed Barzans advancing, led by Raxar himself. Traitors, Raxar roared. You side with our destroyers while our people suffer. Collins pushed Kellar behind him, drawing his sidearm. Stand down, Raxar. This helps no one. But Raxar was beyond reason. With a primal scream, he charged forward, his followers unleashing a barrage of energy bolts. Collins and his crew dove for cover, returning fire. The narrow corridor became a war zone. Acrid smoke filled the air as both sides exchanged volleys. Collins saw two of his security officers fall, their bodies sprawled motionless on the deck. We can't hold them, Janus shouted over the din. Collins gritted his teeth. They were outgunned and outnumbered. If Raxar's forces reached the Valiant... Suddenly, a familiar voice cut through the chaos. Stop! All of you! Kellar stood in the middle of the corridor, arms raised. Behind her, a group of Barzans emerged, weapons trained on Raxar's faction. This ends now, Kalar declared, her voice steady despite the danger. We did not survive war and plague to die fighting each other. Raxar, stand down. For a moment, the fighting ceased. Raxar's eyes darted between Kalar and Collins, 
confusion and rage warring on his face. Then, with a snarl of defiance, he opened fire on his own people. The corridor erupted in pandemonium once more. But this time, the tide had turned. Kalar's loyalists, fighting alongside the humans, slowly pushed Raxar's forces back. Collins found himself shoulder to shoulder with Kalar, their weapons blazing in unison. As the last of Raxar's followers fell, the Barzan leader himself turned and fled, disappearing into the smoky depths of the ship. In the sudden silence that followed, Collins surveyed the carnage. The corridor was littered with bodies, human and Barzan alike. The air stank of ozone and blood. Kellar placed a hand on his arm. Captain, what now? Collins took a deep breath. The Valiant was crippled. Lives had been lost, and a dangerous faction still threatened both their peoples. But as he looked at Kalar, at the humans and Barzans who had fought together, he saw a glimmer of hope. Now, he said, we rebuild, together. In the days following the failed mutiny, an uneasy calm settled over the joined vessels. Captain Collins stood on the Valiant's observation deck, gazing at the scarred surface of the Barzan homeworld below. The ship's damage control teams worked tirelessly, repairing ruptured conduits and stabilizing critical systems. Kalar approached, her footsteps echoing in the quiet space. Your crew works efficiently, Captain. I admit, I'm impressed. Collins nodded, not taking his eyes off the planet. We've had practice, but efficiency isn't enough. We need to address the root of our conflict. Kellar's expression hardened. And how do you propose we do that? Our peoples have been at each other's throats for generations. Collins turned to face her. Peace talks, a neutral ground where both sides can air grievances and work towards a lasting solution. Kellar's eyes widened. You can't be serious. After everything that's happened... Precisely because of everything that's happened, Collins interrupted. We have a chance here, Kalar, to break the cycle of violence and mistrust. She studied him for a long moment, then slowly nodded. Very well, I'll speak with my people, but I make no promises. As Kalar left to consult with the Barzan survivors, Collins tapped his comm badge. Commander Janus, begin preparations for a diplomatic summit. We're going to broker a truce. The next week was a flurry of activity. The Valiant's largest cargo bay was transformed into a makeshift conference room. Human and Barzan delegations arrived, eyeing each other warily as they took their seats around a long table. Collins stood to address the gathering. We come here today with open minds and... A thunderous explosion rocked the ship, cutting him off mid-sentence. Alarms blared as the lights flickered. Panicked shouts filled the air as both humans and Barzans scrambled for cover. Security teams to the cargo bay, Collins yelled into his comm badge. He drew his sidearm, scanning the room for threats. Through the smoke and chaos, a familiar figure emerged. Raxar, flanked by a group of armed Barzans, stormed into the conference room. This ends now, Raxar roared. No more talking. No more compromise. His followers fanned out, quickly subduing the unarmed diplomats. Collins felt the muzzle of a weapon press against his back. Drop it, human, a harsh voice growled. Gritting his teeth, Collins let his pistol clatter to the floor. He watched helplessly as Raxar's men rounded up the most prominent members of both delegations, including Kalar. You won't get away with this, Raxar, Kalar spat, struggling against her captors. Raxar sneered. I already have. Now move. As the hostages were herded out of the room, Collins caught Kalar's eye. A silent understanding passed between them. This wasn't over. Hours later, Collins crouched in a maintenance shaft, leading a mixed team of human security officers and Barzan loyalists. They had tracked Raxar's group to an abandoned section of the Barzan ship. Remember, Collins whispered, stun weapons only. We need to minimize casualties. The team nodded grimly. With a hand signal, Collins led them forward. They burst into a large chamber, catching Raxar's forces off guard. Stun bolts crackled through the air as both sides exchanged fire. Collins dove behind a fallen support beam, returning fire with practiced precision. Through the chaos, he spotted Kalar and the other hostages, huddled in a corner, 
guarded by two of Raxar's men. He tapped the shoulder of a Barzan warrior next to him, pointing to the captives. Cover me! Colin sprinted across the open space, dodging energy blasts. He tackled one guard while his Barzan ally took down the other. In seconds, the hostages were free. Get them to safety, Colin shouted, turning back to the firefight. Raxar stood in the center of the room, his face contorted with rage. You've ruined everything, he screamed, firing wildly. A stun bolt caught him square in the chest. Raxar's eyes rolled back as he collapsed. In the sudden silence, Colin surveyed the scene. Most of Raxar's followers had been subdued or fled. But Raxar himself was nowhere to be seen. Damn it, Collins muttered. He got away again. As the combined human Barzan security team secured the area, Lieutenant Novak approached Collins, her face pale. Sir, you need to see this, she said, handing him a data pad. Collins skimmed the information, his eyes widening. Are you sure about this? Novak nodded solemnly. We found it in Raxar's personal files. The Chimera virus. It wasn't created by humans. It was discovered in an ancient alien ruin on the far side of the Barzan homeworld. Collins looked up, meeting Kalar's questioning gaze. We need to call another meeting, he said. There's something both our peoples need to know. Months passed, and the fragile alliance between humans and Barzans grew stronger. The Valiant, now repaired and upgraded, led a convoy of sleek Barzan vessels through the star-flecked void. Their destination, the human colony of New Haven. Captain Collins stood on the bridge, watching the ships glide in formation. Kalar approached, her steps now familiar on the Valiant's deck. Our people are nervous, she said, her voice low. This will be the first time many have set foot on a human world. Collins nodded. It's a big step, but a necessary one. A proximity alarm blared. Red lights flashed across the bridge as the tactical officer shouted, Multiple contacts! They're coming out of nowhere! Collins's eyes widened as he saw the swarm of fighters emerging from behind a nearby asteroid field. At their center, a massive carrier bore the insignia of Raxar's extremist faction. Red alert! All hands to battle stations! The convoy scattered as Raxar's forces struck. Energy beams lanced out, catching a Barzan ship off guard. It exploded in a silent fireball. Return fire, Collins ordered. The Valiant's weapons blazed to life, but Raxar's fighters were too nimble. A blinding flash erupted from the enemy carrier. The Valiant shuddered violently, consoles exploding in showers of sparks. Direct hit to our engines, the helm officer reported. We're dead in space. Collins gripped his chair as the artificial gravity fluctuated. Status of the other ships? Two more Barzan vessels disabled, Kalar reported, her face grim. The rest are scattered. Before Collins could respond, the ship rocked again. This time, it wasn't weapons fire. Multiple hull breaches, Security Chief Rodriguez shouted. We have borders! The sounds of battle echoed through the corridors as Raxar's troops poured onto the Valiant. Collins grabbed a phaser rifle from a nearby weapons locker. Kalar, with me, he said. We need to coordinate our defense. They fought their way through the ship, rallying human crew and Barzan warriors alike. But something was wrong. The invaders they encountered weren't just Raxar's soldiers. They were changing. Collins watched in horror as a security officer, grazed by an enemy's strange weapon, began to convulse. His skin bubbled and twisted, limbs elongating into monstrous shapes. In seconds, the man Collins had known was gone, replaced by a snarling, mindless beast. By the gods, Kellar whispered, what has Raxar done? The mutated creatures tore through friend and foe alike. Collins made the agonizing decision to seal off entire decks, venting them to space to contain the spread of the virus. As they neared engineering, a group of Raxar's uninfected troops ambushed them. In the chaos of the firefight, Kalar was separated from Collins. He saw her dragged away, Raxar himself emerging from the shadows to claim his prize. I'll come for you, Collins shouted, but Kalar was already gone. With a heavy heart, Collins pressed on to engineering. The ship's core pulsed an angry red, 
damage indicators flashing across every console. Captain, his chief engineer reported, we can't contain the virus. Our only option is to initiate the self-destruct sequence. Collins nodded grimly. Do it. I'm going after Kalar. As the self-destruct countdown began, Collins fought his way through the infested corridors. He found Raxar in the observation lounge, holding Kalar at gunpoint. It's over, Raxar, Collins said, his weapon trained on the Barzan extremist. Raxar sneered. You're too late, human. Once your ship is destroyed, I'll unleash this virus on every human world. Your kind will be wiped from the galaxy. Collins didn't waste words. He fired, catching Raxar in the shoulder. The Barzan roared in pain and rage, returning fire. Energy bolts scorched the air as the two leaders engaged in a desperate battle. Kalar, seizing her chance, struck at Raxar from behind. The distraction was all Collins needed. His next shot found its mark, and Raxar collapsed. We need to evacuate, Collins said, helping Kalar to her feet. This ship is about to... A deafening explosion cut him off. The observation lounge's viewports cracked, then shattered. As the vacuum of space rushed in, Collins's last act was to shove Kalar into an escape pod. The pod jettisoned just as the Valiant erupted in a massive fireball. Kalar watched, tears streaming down her face, as the ship that had come to represent hope for both their peoples was consumed by fire and twisted metal. Rescue ships arrived soon after, collecting the scattered survivors. But for Kalar, the victory felt hollow. As she stood on the bridge of the human vessel that had saved her, she vowed that the sacrifices made this day would not be in vain. The new leader of the Barzan people gazed out at the stars, her expression resolute. The path ahead would be difficult, but for the first time in generations, it was a path that humans and Barzans would walk together. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.